Welcome to Green TV, the show dedicated to positive Green New Deal solutions and the candidates that advocate for them. I'm Gail Farrell Parker, your host for today. Green TV is about Green New Deal, eco jobs for the economy, positive solutions. Eco capitalism, prices must tell the environmental truth. It's about the green industrial revolution. It's about solar jobs, wind jobs, geothermal jobs. <clears throat> it's about rail jobs, weatherization jobs, conservation jobs, efficiency jobs, lots of jobs, geothermal jobs, rail jobs. It's about building walkable, bikeable, green neighborhoods pedestrian-friendly and rail-friendly communities. It's about having cleaner air, cleaner water. It's about cutting taxpayer subsidies to zero for fossil fuel, big oil, big auto. Rail built anywhere in America benefits all of America. Renewable energy is free energy. It's clean energy. On today's show, we are focusing on solar energy, how it works, how much it costs, and some common mistakes that newbies make. But first, this is what one woman is doing about corruption in her neighborhood. Hi, this is Sherry Honkala, and I'm running in the 197 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania for state representative. The last two reps uh, have resigned because of corruption, and the last state rep uh, that was running Freddie Ramirez, I'm happy to say, is off the ballot because he doesn't live in this neighborhood. Um, we're going to end the legacy of corruption on March 21st, and I need you to join me. Join this coalition, hashtag we are the 197. Also go to my website at sherry197.com. I'm telling you guys, it's time for all of us to decide whose side we're on. Are we going to side with the actual residents and neighbors and people that are trying to uplift their lives? Join me. We are the 197. And now this on solar panels. Every hour the sun's energy falls on the planet is equal to the amount of energy used by the entire human population in one year. The energy from the sun is in limitless supply. Unlike oil or gas, solar power is a reliable source of energy whose prices never fluctuate. Solar energy is free. How does it work? Solar electricity is generated using photovoltaic cell technology that has been optimized over years of research. Simply put, the greater the intensity of the sun, the greater the current of electricity. Solar panels collect sunlight and turn it into direct current or DC electricity. Even on cloudy days, your panels will absorb sunlight. The system's inverter then turns this DC electricity into the same electric current that comes from your traditional utility lines. Your solar electric system is connected directly to your utility power supply so that the excess power from your solar panels will be fed back to your local utility company. Why BEP? We offer incredible cost savings and an easy installation process. We'll handle everything from planning and installation to getting you all available federal and local incentives. With BEP, switching to solar is easy, affordable, accessible, and a smart investment. Contact us for your free site assessment and consultation. Get in touch with us today to learn more about our no money down, no interest for a year special offer. Solar energy. Our planet needs it. Your future needs it. Your business needs it. What's up YouTube? This is LDS Reliance. I get a lot of questions about what components I use and how much things cost and where did I get them from. So I thought I would do a video on how much solar panel systems cost. What do they really cost in the real world? 
So as I was thinking about this, I wanted to divide this into three different categories. The first category would be the small systems. Um, these would be systems like I show in my beginner uh, solar for beginners series where you've got a small 10 or 20 watt solar panel. You're just starting out with solar uh, and you're using cheap components that you don't necessarily need to depend upon every day. Uh, the second category would be like your medium sized systems. You graduate into something where you're going to actually use it for something but you're still probably under a thousand watts and uh, it's not something that you're, you know, you're powering your whole house off of or whatever. And the third category would be large production systems like you would kind of have installed on your roof on your home if you were going to power the whole house off or cabin or whatever off of solar and, and you're using the uh, and, and this is a kind of a quote-unquote mission critical application that you really need to depend upon. The other thing that I wanted to discuss before we uh, start talking numbers is we're only going to be talking about an off-grid setup. So in other words, like you see in the picture, you need a solar panel, you need a charge controller, you need a battery, you need an inverter. Those four components are non-negotiable. You have to have them. That's the only type of setup we're going to talk about. We're not going to talk about a grid tied system because uh, there's lots of variability there. There's different ways you can set that up with you know, micro inverters versus uh, bigger inverter. I mean, and then you've got the uh, installation cost where you really need to get a licensed electrician involved. So we're not going to talk about that. We're only going to be talking about off-grid. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about these components individually. This is on the lower end. This is a 20 watt panel. You've seen it in a couple of my vid videos. Um, <clears throat> when you're dealing with really small panels, you're gonna pay a little bit more per watt than you do for some of the, the middle and higher end panels. Um, just because, you know, there's more material other than the wafers themselves. So, <clears throat> Generally speaking, you're going to probably spend about two dollars to three dollars per watt for uh, for these. Now, if you hunt for a good deal, you can you can probably still get them for about a buck fifty a watt. This one uh, in particular was thirty dollars, so it's in that dollar fifty um, per watt range. It's a twenty watt panel, so this is a a good uh, example of a lower end panel. It's twelve volts. Uh, almost all of the low end panels are going to be twelve volts. You can find really small ones, 4 volt panels, 3 volt, 6 volt panels, but I'd recommend you stay away from those. Okay, and here we have a, about a medium sized panel. This is a 100 watt panel. Um, this one in particular is made by Grape Solar and cost me 130 bucks uh, with free shipping from Amazon. So it's still relatively about in that dollar, dollar 25 a watt range with shipping, um, which is about the best you're going to get right now. Now on the larger end, uh, the ones that you use to kind of put all over the roof of your home or whatever, these are big panels. You're going to 100% guaranteed to pay shipping freight costs. So expect, uh, you know, high shipping costs. But generally speaking, um, you can usually find something um, you can get down into the dollar per watt range um, if you really look. Now that's not paying for the name brands like the LG's and the Kyocera and some of those name brand but if you if you're smart about shopping you can find about a dollar per watt uh, on up to I mean you can spend a lot higher for name brand panels or for more advanced technologies but generally speaking one dollar to two dollar per watt plus freight shipping is about what you can expect and here we have a good example of a low-end charge controller. Um, a lot of these will just be Chinese knockoff uh, units or, or just no name, um, and they'll be available on eBay or Amazon or something for $20 or less. Sometimes you can find them for 10 bucks. I think this, that's what I paid for this one. Um, they're nothing special. The electronics in them are, are not that great, so this is great for learning on, but you really don't want to be depending upon this. And here you have um, kind of a middle range, uh, since we're talking middle of, of the road, got about a middle range um, charge controller here. This is a TriStar uh, TS60. Um, this one is a little bit under $200. It's not MPPT, but it's about as good as you're going to get non-MPPT. And um, it can handle 60 amps, and uh, that's a pretty decent system that a lot, you know, is definitely beyond kind of the beginner phase. 
And for the large uh, charge controllers, expect to pay much more. Now, when you're when you're installing a home system, you're probably going to want to move to the maximum power point tracking or MPPT technology, which in increases the cost. And you need reliable components that you can count on that are going to be safe and that you can depend on every day to provide you with power. So you're probably going to be in the 400 and up range, 400 to 1,000 dollars a piece for these things. And as it shows uh, in this uh, picture, you'll probably need multiple charge controllers depending on how many panels you have and how many batteries you have and so forth. For small hobby systems, you can use uh, sealed lead acid batteries like shown here. These are great because they're fairly cheap um, and they do not require any maintenance. And now these are going to cost you um, approximately $2 per amp hour on the battery. And then here we have kind of the middle of the road batteries, um, in my opinion. Now this is going to be, th these are definitely the step above the little um, sealed lead acid batteries that, that you play with in those smaller systems. Um, these are um, deep cycle batteries, but they're not renewable energy batteries. These are kind of the $90, $100 um, variety from... Um, you know, Costco, Sam's, uh, Walmart, whatever. For large systems, you're going to want to use batteries that are designed to handle the abuse and are very reliable. So, for example, this Trojan T105RE or renewable energy. Now, these, uh, keep in mind, these are very expensive, very heavy, and they come in six volts. So, you're going to have to put multiple batteries together in series to achieve the voltage you need. Okay, here's an example of a lower end inverter. These are the kind that you're going to see at your gas stations and, and at Walmart or, uh, or wherever for, you know, 20 bucks, 30 bucks or less. Um, these are, you know, they typically come with uh, the car adapter. So that's kind of what they're, they're designed for, but they're perfect for solar because they use 12 volts input and then they have, you know, your USB and or your, well, your, your outlets and or your USB connections so that you can use them with, with various loads. And here you've got a good example of a middle of the road inverter. This one still doesn't have a ton of watts. I think this is only a 600 watt unit, but this is a pure sine wave inverter and it's much cleaner power, much more expensive. This is a $200 inverter. And last but not least, for large inverters, um, you're still going to want to stick with pure sine wave so you can run your sensitive electronics and so forth, but you're going to need a lot more wattage, so expect to pay a lot more money. Uh, these are going to typically cost 400 to 1,000 or even more, depending on how many watts you want in one unit. Okay, so what does this all mean? Well, for small systems, uh, again, like I've shown in my Solar for Beginners series, um, expect to pay roughly $120 for the whole system. Now, we can argue till we're blue in the face about exact prices, but this is a pretty good ballpark, plus or minus uh, what you'll pay in real life in U.S. dollars. For medium-sized systems, we're taking a little bit of a quantum leap here, and we're going with more robust uh, equipment, bigger, everything costs a little bit more. So you were looking at roughly $1,200, $1,300 in that range. Again, plus or minus a little bit, but that's, that's about what you can expect to graduate to the next level. And then for large systems, this is again another large quantum leap forward uh, in price and complexity. So you're looking at minimum six to $8,000, probably more like 8,500 to 10,000, to put in a, like a three kilowatt system is basically what I spec'd out here. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. Hopefully this has been a little informative and eye-opening for some of you. Welcome back to Green TV, the show dedicated to positive Green New Deal solutions and the candidates that advocate for them. Today we are featuring solar energy, how solar panels work, how much they cost, and some common mistakes that newbies make. I learned a lot putting this show together. I hope you enjoy it. And now more on solar energy. The sun. Every day, the sun shines more than 3 trillion watts of free energy on the earth. That's enough energy to power over 3 million homes for an entire year being produced every day. Solar panels harness the energy and convert it into clean electricity to power our homes, businesses, and lifestyles. Light from the sun stimulates electrons on a solar panel. 
These electrons create DC or direct current electricity. Solar electricity travels from the panels on your roof through an inverter to the circuit breaker panel of your building. An inverter changes DC electricity into usable AC or alternating current electricity before sending it to the breaker panel of your building. Your home uses that electricity to power the electronic devices we use every day. It's like having your own power plant on your roof with an endless supply of clean energy. Anytime the panels are producing more energy than you are using, like sunny days when you are on vacation, the excess energy is sent back to your utility company where they are required to buy back your excess electricity at the same rates they would normally charge, a concept called net metering. The utility company purchases your excess solar electricity and sells that energy to homes and businesses in your neighborhood. Even homes and businesses that do not have solar panels are still buying your excess solar electricity. When the sun goes down, your home or business purchases electricity from your local utility company the same way it has in the past. However, credits from your excess solar energy produced during the day will offset nighttime charges, which are much cheaper than peak daytime rates. This maximizes your savings through time of use billing, where you are selling energy to the utility during daytime peak hours while buying energy during nighttime off peak hours. Instead of buying electricity from a power plant that burns coal and other pollutants, you are taking advantage of the free abundant energy of the sun. As energy rates continue to go up, your system produces clean, renewable energy at no cost to you. Now you get to choose how much to spend on electricity. Imagine if we could do that with gasoline prices. Today, there are some incredible incentives and rebate to help pay for solar installation. Finance programs can help you install panels for as little as $500 down. Increase the value of your home or business by reducing your energy costs. Businesses will increase profits, while homeowners will increase their home's market value. Help save the environment and reduce global warming. Start producing your own clean energy. For more information, visit Solar Buddy's system quote page to see how solar will benefit your home or business today. Are you spending a large portion of your paycheck each month on a high electricity bill? Over the last 30 years, utility rates have continued to increase by about 6% per year. Unless you stop turning on your lights, using your kitchen, and washing your clothes, it'll just keep getting more and more expensive. And that's the bad news. But here's the good news. You have a choice. You can now tap into the sun's natural energy and use it to power everything in your home without having to write a big check to a power company at the end of each month. Here's how it works. Every day, sunlight will stream down onto your solar panels with photons, which are particles of sunlight. Then, the solar panels convert those photons into electrons of electricity using photovoltaic cell technology. The amount of electricity generated depends on the intensity of the sun, but even on cloudy days, your solar panels will still absorb sunlight and generate you energy. Once the energy is transferred from the sun, it flows from the solar panels to an inverter that converts the raw electricity into ready-to-use electricity for your home. You don't have to do anything. What's even better, solar electric systems can produce more electricity than your home needs, and the extra you do not use goes back to your utility grid. This is called net metering, and you'll be able to enjoy watching your utility meter spin backwards. Then at night or on cloudy days when your solar system is not producing enough energy for your home, you will be able to draw power down from the grid, so you never have to worry about running out of electricity. And if you are producing more energy than your household requires, then you'll get a credit from the utility company. You'll feel good about your solar investment, not only because it will provide you with a lucrative annual return that you can rely on, saving you thousands of dollars on long-term utility costs, but because you'll be doing your part in providing a safer planet for you your family, and future generations. Best of all, it's a lot more affordable than you might think. 
If you're ready to stop wasting money on high electricity bills and start harnessing the free power that's available to you right now, just give us a call. Mention this video and our friendly team will be able to answer all your questions. What's up YouTube, this is LDS Reliance. Today I wanna to talk about the top seven mistakes that people make when they go solar. These are in no particular order and they apply to on-grid, uh, grid-tide, or off-grid. Number one is confusing daylight hours with sun hours. A sun hour is a specific unit of measurement that we use in solar to define the period of time in the day when we're gonna get the most out of our solar panels. So when it's summertime, we all think, oh, the day is super long, we've got 12 hours of daylight, everything's gonna be great, our solar panels are gonna be working awesome. However, even in the, the middle of summer in July, the sun may rise at 6 a.m. and set at 9 p.m., but you're only getting seven sun hours in the middle of that day where your solar panel is working anywhere close to its maximum capacity. So the rest of the day, the sun will still shine, the solar panel will still work, but it will function at a very, very, very reduced rate. Number two is underestimating your power consumption and the various devices that you have in your house. We all have a bunch of different devices in our homes, but not very many of us know how much they're consuming. So how are we supposed to know what this stuff consumes? Well, there's a couple different ways. Number one, you can get a device that will measure the electricity consumed over time and you can do some math or most appliances and electronic devices in your home will come with information from the manufacturer that gives you an estimate of especially appliances as you see here there's an energy guide and it tells you an estimate of how much this device is going to consume pay special attention to air conditioners heaters blow dryers microwaves stoves refrigerators and so forth if you at least get a grasp on those big devices, you'll have a pretty good idea of what you're going to consume. Number three is not decreasing your usage first. This one is a no-brainer if you do a little math, and I know we're all scared of a little math. So let's do an easy math problem first. The average solar panel costs about a dollar per watt. Um, to replace an incandescent light bulb, a 60-watt light bulb, with a 10-watt LED light bulb is going to cost you $5.00 that's going to net a savings of 50 watts. That's going to result in a $50 savings in solar panels you don't have to buy now because you made that energy sa saving step. There are lots of other ways that you can save on your usage before installing solar, and it's a big deal. You're talking thousands of dollars on a whole home system just by making some careful upgrades first before you do so. Number four is having unreasonable or unrealistic expectations. However you got interested in solar, whether you're wanting to go green or you want to save money, you need to know the limitations of what you're getting into. So it's very tempting to go out to Harbor Freight or to Amazon or whatever and find a, a solar panel kit and, and you, it's, it's affordable, it's 100, 150 bucks, 300 bucks, whatever it is, and you're think, you have great visions of, of doing lots of stuff with this system. I get these questions in, my, in the comments all the time. I want to power my refrigerator with this solar panel. Okay, well let's think about this for a second. You've got a 100 watt kit that you bought, but you have a 600 watt refrigerator. How's that going to work? Your solar panel would have to work six times longer than your refrigerator and your refrigerator runs 24 hours a day. It's just not a realistic expectation and that's just one example. I'd recommend that you start small with something like a light and then you can scale up later once you figure out what realistic the limitations and the, the production of your system is going to be in the real world. Number five is bad solar panel installation. This is not giving enough thought to how you're going to mount the solar panel and all of the considerations that go into that. There are lots of things to consider when mounting your solar panel. I'll just talk about a couple real quickly. Number one, it has to face south. If you live in the northern hemisphere, it needs to face south. The, another one is that the angle that you mount the solar panel needs to be equal to the latitude of where you live, roughly speaking. If you can't move it to track the sun, it needs to be approximately the angle of latitude. 
Another one, and this is not very well known, is that solar panels are designed to run cool. They don't like heat. So that's counterintuitive because they operate in the sun, but an op a solar panel's optimal range is about 77 degrees Fahrenheit. And so if you get, if you don't leave enough air gap behind the solar panel, or you put it in an area that's going to see excessive heat, it will never reach its rated efficiencies. Number six is taking a deal that's too good to be true. Usually this is gonna be with the grid tied system, the leased systems that uh, people are selling door to door now, but it can also apply to off grid as well. We've all heard the phrases, if it's too good to be true, it probably is, and there's no such thing as a free lunch. So when someone comes to your door and is selling you a solar panel system completely free to you that's going to completely eliminate your electric bill or decrease it to almost nothing, there's going to be some drawbacks to that that you need to look into. I'm not going to get into all of that. That's not the point of this video, but you need to look into the finer print and the, the drawbacks of what you're getting into. Another scenario is that you do a lot of research, you do some shopping, and you find a pallet of solar panels for 30 cents a watt. Well, chances are that's probably going to be B-grade cells or, or something, and, and typically those are just cosmetic, but they can very much affect the performance of your solar panel. So know what you're buying, get some pictures beforehand, get some guarantees or whatever before you buy something like that. And finally, number seven is buying before defining your load. And this is one that I made myself, so I know what I'm talking about here. This is, what this is, is buying a solar panel system before having any clue what you want to do with it. That's a little like buying a house without knowing who's going to live there and what your needs are. You may get a smoking deal on that one bedroom townhome that's amazing, but then you promise your brother's family that he can come live with you and he's got four kids. How's that going to work? A lot of this stuff just comes down to patience. Know what you're doing, do the research, cover all the angles, ask people who have done this before so that you know and then decide what your wants are out of the system before you go out and, and buy something. Don't be like me, I did that. Luckily, it all worked out in the end and I was able to recover from that, but some people may not. So that concludes our list. Hopefully you learned a few things. Maybe I warned a few people before they make a mistake. It'll all be worth it if that if that's the case. So, as always, thank you. That's it for today's Green TV. I'm Gail Farrell Parker. Join us again next time for Green TV and more on solar energy.